Hello, can we please talk about UFC 281 happened at the weekend. Also, just going to have a quick look at what's been going on in MMA news. It's mostly the results and the fallout from UFC 281 because it was just a sensational event. So first thing I want to recap is uh, basically... Uh, the theme of the night was you had a lot of the Australian guys, uh, well, Australian and New Zealand, coming over, coming over from City Kickboxing. And uh, obviously the leader of that pack, the middleweight champion, Israel Adesanya, headlining. Now, whilst it wasn't, uh, you know, the best night for a few of the guys, one guy from that camp that did shine brilliantly was Mr. Carlos Olberg. Take a bow, sir. That was fantastic. He, he looked very, very slick. Now... I know that he uh, lost, I think, one of his fights, uh, one of his first fights, I can't remember who it was, Kennedy, uh, that guy from Nigeria. I, I, can, I can see his face, Kennedy something. Anyway, uh, yeah, he, he dropped that fight, but that was kind of an experience, I think. And uh, he, he, his timing looked incredible. He was just in and out. He just looked so big as well. And a light heavyweight, that could be a real problem. If he can start putting it together like that every single time he fights, which is going to be difficult, I admit. But so far, so good. I mean, that was a, a sensational finish. Go back and watch it. He hit the guy so hard that, bless him, like they tried to sit him on his stool afterwards and he, he literally fell off his stool. Uh, that's how hard he hit him. He, and it was just a lovely like check left hook because he hit him with the jab and then came round with the left hook and that was what wobbled him but then it was the shot that he came in after because he misses the first one and then comes back in and smashes him right in the head it was lovely lovely stuff I mean not for his opponent obviously but you know it was nice for Carlos Olberg. Um Reyes bless him oh God, I can't feel bad for the dude like he's not been the same since he fought John Jones has he he's just been dropping and Fair play to Span. Span, you know, he hit him so hard. It was a jab that got him, I think. It was just, whoa, just crushing. Absolutely crushing. Uh, Chandler versus Dustin was as advertised. Absolute chaos from start to finish. I could watch those guys fight every week. And I would love to sit... Because, see, this is the thing uh, for Michael Chandler. People are saying, well, you know, he, he needs to learn how to fight smarter. Because it's not going to look good on him. And he won't... Uh, you know, get the main events and stuff in the UFC. It's like, no, he will because it's entertaining and it's entertainment first and foremost, right? If it wasn't entertaining, if it didn't, if the UFC didn't put asses in seats, then there wouldn't be any money in it. But like, you know, Chandler, he's going to be a main event guy just just because of the way he fights and because he's so skilled. And let's be fair, look at the losses, the, who he's lost to. He's lost to some pretty good fighters, you know, because he's only been fighting the best. So look, a loss doesn't, I don't think a loss really damages uh, Chandler's stock a great amount. And I think that, you know, both guys will, will only shoot up from there. And the main event, absolutely outstanding. Couldn't believe, I mean... What I loved about the main event was there was so much of a story going into it. And I love a story. This is what people like. like. People like the sport, yes, but it has to have a narrative. It's why people follow these kind of things. It's why the UFC have done such a good job in letting people get to know the fighters, giving you the backstory behind it. Because obviously you had, you had Pereira following Adesanya into the UFC from kickboxing. He's already beaten him twice. And it was a great fight, really was. I thought it was a brilliant performance from Israel Adesanya. It's one of the best performances we've seen of him. But as we saw, he wasn't perfect for the entire fight. And against Alexander, well, Alex Ray, um, Pereira, sorry, you only have to slip up once. Against Pereira, slipping up once is all it takes that dude he's so big as well i didn't realize how much larger he is than adesanya i mean when i was i don't know if it was the camera angles or whatever but when they're saying that both of them are billed at six foot four i feel like one of them isn't six foot four do you know what i mean it might have been the camera angles or something but uh, but for me when you looked at them it just looked like Pereira was just much larger both height wise and just he's a big He's a big dude. And he looked like he was made out of granite as well, which is, um, it looked, it, he didn't look fun to hit. He looked like if you hit him, it's going to hurt you. And I think that happened to Israel a couple of times, to be fair. You saw like, some of the kicks he was throwing out. It's like, that looks like it hurts to hit him. And that's a problem, isn't it? But yeah, congratulations to Alex Pereira. What an outstanding performance. And to be able to keep your power to the very end like that, is really, really, oh, that's a problem for people. 
I'll be interested to see how he does against a top level grappler because let's be fair, Israel Adesanya did win the grappling exchanges and, and actually managed to get him to the ground off the back of a takedown attempt from Pereira as well. Uh, it would be interesting to see uh, your cams at, uh, even your Robert Whittakers are probably going to exploit that. But either way, uh, I'm not going to take anything away from Pereira. You know, let this, you've got to get him to the ground first and also survive the onslaught on the feet. And Pereira is just scary. He's scary up there. And every, every round starts on the feet. So, uh, yeah, I'd just like to say um, thank you very, very much for watching. If you could also do me a favour, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. It really helps me out and it's massively appreciated. Now I'm going to go for the news that I care about in 60 seconds. So we've got Jimmy Wallhead captures the welterweight Cage Warriors title at the weekend at the age of 38. I thought it was happening this weekend. Gutted, because I actually missed it. I knew that there was, I knew that the event was on, but in my head, it was, it, it was on the weekend after. That's my bad. That's completely my fault. But Jimmy Wallhead, congratulations to you, mate. That is bloody brilliant. Christian Leroy Duncan defends his Cage Warriors middleweight title at the weekend as well. Again, gutted that I missed it, but I'll, I'll watch the replay. I'll find time to watch the replay. Big John Fury goes absolutely nuts at Jake Paul. Took his shirt off and everything. Hilarious. I love Big John Fury. He is. Just brilliant. He's an absolute, he's a national treasure. Protects him at all costs. Now you've got a new middleweight champion, as we said. Uh, congratulations, to Alex Pereira. Uh, next for Chandler, could very well be Conor McGregor. And the Philadelphia Eagles are no longer running a perfect season because they lost to the Washington Redskins. They stink. They're in the toilet. That's the losing 60 seconds. So yeah, I just want to expand very quickly on Jimmy Wallhead. Uh, winning the welterweight title in Cage Warriors. It's a long time coming and I'm so happy for him. It's just, it, it, it's brilliant. I've watched, I've actually seen him fight in Bama because I've been to a few Bama events. Uh, I haven't been to too many of the Cage Warriors events, but I have seen Jimmy Waller fight in Bama. He's been around forever. He's been around so long, he fought Frank Trigg. Yeah, that's right. Twinkle Toes Frank Trigg. He actually beat him as well. I don't know when. I think you'd have to go back as far. I think it might have been as far back as 2010. But I know that he definitely beat Frank Trigg because I looked at it ages ago. And because um, you know, I, was, I, was, I was researching a fight for him. But anyway, uh, he's, he had a couple of fights in the UFC, but it wasn't to be. But for me, I'm just like, you know, at the age of 38, to capture the welterweight title in a major... It's, it is a big organisation, Cage Warriors. To be able to capture the title in Cage Warriors, the, it, it's a really big achievement, actually. Because on the regional scene, they're kind of the top promotion. And yeah, congratulations, Jimmy Wallhead. Absolutely thrilled for you, mate. Brilliant. And then... The next thing I want to expand on is the reason that I think that Chandler versus Connor is the fight to make. Because after the fight with Dustin, uh, Chandler has actually said that he was, he's still eyeing that fight with Conor McGregor. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to be screaming, that obviously uh, he's coming off uh, two losses. But, you know, so is Connor. Connor's coming off of a lot of losses as well. And also, on paper, this is a winnable fight for either man. It would be spectacular as all hell. And it would do huge pay-per-view numbers. Don't try and pretend like Michael Chandler versus Conor McGregor, despite their records, wouldn't do blockbuster numbers. Because the style of Chandler, he's going to go after Conor McGregor like a savage. Conor McGregor is going to just, yeah, you know, he, he's he's going to try and strike and take and take Chandler's head off. It would be spectacular. It'd just be fireworks. I think, honestly, that's the fight to make. I don't think you can sell another fight between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier. Actually, look, I take that back. You can sell that because you could sell Conor McGregor fighting a teapot. You honestly could. Like, just put Conor McGregor in there. He does massive pay-per-view numbers. But I think, personally, that Chandler versus Conor, at this point, probably does more pay-per-view numbers than... Connor versus Dustin. I might be wrong there because obviously there is the rivalry previously between Dustin and Connor. So, like I said, either. But for me, what would I like to see personally? Chandler versus Connor. That's just what I want. And then I've just got a troll of the week, and I've only got one this week because basically it's just the uh, it's it's been doing the rounds. It's pretty funny. As we saw, Adesanya, uh, he's had Alex Pereira follow him to mixed martial arts and take his title after after beating him in kickboxing twice. So now 
Israel Adesanya takes up golf. Guess who turns up on the golf course? None other than Alex Pereira coming to going to beat you at golf as well. I don't. Know. It's, it, I do feel. I don't feel bad for Israel Adesanya. You know, he's he's got he's been very successful. Life is pretty good for him. But yeah, it does suck that he couldn't get that win. I'm sure he'll be back. He'll be back better than ever. And I'm sure we will see that fight again. And I'll very much look forward to it. But uh, yeah, that's all I've got time for this week. I'm going to be doing a breakdown of. Uh, Sergey Spivak, UFC Vegas 65, Sergey Spivak versus Derek Lewis main event. That's a fun main event. Like any time Derek Lewis is in there, it's always going to be fun. Sergey Spivak's a very good fighter as well. But I'm going to be breaking down that fight and a couple of other fights from that card. Until then, keep those odds long and those bets terrible.